<laughs> if you don't matter. Of course. Go ahead. <laughs> Hello and welcome to today's session. I'm Francisco Javier Lopez Gullo, and I'm the area coordinator for Murcia TISOL Spain. Uh, on behalf of, this, of TISOL Spain, I'd like to welcome you to my Mikael Armelini session on applying neuroscience research to challenging behavior in class. Just to check that you are in the right session. I'll be the moderator for this session. Please use the chat box if you have any problem with sound. Can I ask you please to name yourself correctly in Zoom? Um, well, I, I think most of you have done this before. Uh, if you want, you can make questions through the chat or box or Q&A, uh, the, through the Q&A section. Uh, we are going to be annotating them and we'll answer them uh, at the end of the session. Furthermore, uh, Michaela will give you her email address at the end of the presentation. So please let me introduce her. Michaela Melini is a Cambridge certified teacher based in Argentina. She has got experience across all educational levels and teaching modes, including face-to-face, -face, hybrid and remote. She leads a CPD scheme, delivers webinars and online courses. You can find her on social media as Remote Teaching Today, a blog about teaching and learning neuroscience in the classroom, learner engagement, online tools, among others. So Michaela, now I'll hand over to you. Brilliant. Thank you, Frank. Thanks for the introduction. And I, um, I think we are ready to kick off then. Um, so um, the aims of these sessions are to gain better understanding of brain theories and also to evaluate and reflect on how trauma-informed classroom strategies can be effective, effectively implemented. Um, then i like us to um, look at these pictures for uh, some minutes and discuss, right? I want us to, to explore and, and challenge our assumptions, our deeply seated beliefs for a while. Mm -hmm. I want us to focus on the first picture and I'd like you to, to tell me what is this kid is about to do, what he's doing and why do you think he's doing this? Mm -hmm. You can activate your microphones or participate using the chat if you want. Okay, I don't know if you, Frank, uh, have some answers in the chat. Or not yet. Um, yes, I have seen some answers on the chat. Uh, yeah. They say making paper airplane uh, to play with and folding mm -hmm. a paper and maybe wants to do a house or a plane, is as in the next photo. Um, mm -hmm. uh, what I think is that uh, this is not on. on uh, on, on the same mode as breakout rooms, so uh, probably participants cannot uh, mute themselves. All right, yeah, sure. Okay, we'll use the chat box instead then. All right, yeah, definitely. This kid is, is yeah, he's making a paper plane. And why is he doing this? Why is, is it, what was, was the reason? What do you think? Mm -hmm. Okay, I will need your help also, Frank, here, if, if anyone is making comments about... Uh, well, yes, uh, someone thinks that uh, he may be unhappy with the results of his, wor of his work. And, and the reason, the uh, other one says that uh, he wants to play, to create, to feel free, or to throw it away to someone. Excellent, brilliant, exactly. Um, yeah, great answers, people. Um, 
yeah, actually, most of us will think of this as uh, probably bad behavior, especially if you look at the second one. Um, but yeah, it totally can be a part of the task. Um, I don't know, a teacher created in order to help students to distract for a little bit of a stress situation, a stressful situation, I mean. Um, it can be plenty of reasons. And I, I would like to give you some food for thought um, if you focus on this second picture, yeah. Um, what the skid is, um, what is he feeling now that he's throwing away <laughs> this paper plane? And, and what is he thinking? What's happening in the brain? So that's something we will uh, be talking about a lot. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's fun how the brain is always prone to jump to conclusions. And especially from our side as a teacher, right? That is always good to, to assume that. Um, to, I mean, to, to analyze and study our assumptions and presuppositions. So yeah, great. Let's start by uh, defining challenging behavior exactly. Yeah, so we were analyzing the reasons behind it um, and, and that all behavior is not always challenging or bad behavior. So I have seen that many of you already answered this in the poll list correctly. And if you haven't yet, I, I would like you to to please answer. Mm -hmm. So the question is, which of the following best describes challenging behavior? The first reason is it interferes with children's learning, with teachers' ability to teach and children's opportunities to learn, and it puts children at risk for later social problems or school failure. Um, this was uh, the definition posed by Kaysa and Wonsminski. And I mean, Actually, they, they, this, this book um, on, on challenging behavior by these authors has, is incredible and I truly recommend you uh, if you want to expand on this topic. So, do learners always behave badly, intentionally, deliberately? What do you think they do? I will check the, the polls as well as this was on the false list. And let's see, everybody says no. Thanks everybody for, for your answers. Yes, exactly. Not always, I mean, learners do not um, behave badly, uh, deliberately. And it's very important for us as teacher to understand behavior as communication. Yeah, behavior is always a communication of a need of something. That's why uh, we need to help the students to uh, find different ways, different strategies to cope with the stress, for example. And this explains also why learners find themselves under stress may find it difficult to, to behave appropriately in classroom settings. So the question here is, how can we help them to feel safe in, in class, right, as teachers? So now we will delve into um, some uh, brain theories to better understand how trauma affects students and their behavior. And then we will discuss some trauma-informed classroom strategies as well. So we will start with one of my favorite, um, which is um, McLean's theory of the human brain. So um, he, describes it into a neocortex, mammalian brain and reptilian brain. Um, let's start by the reptilian brain then, okay? The reptilian brain is the, the lower part, the, is the lowest part 
of the brain and it's also called the primitive brain. And it's chart of uh, the most basic um, functions of the body, like uh, changing or adapting um, uh, breathing rates or um, heart rates, I mean, um, body temperature and these kind of functions. Um, it's, it's, that's why it's called the primitive brain. Then we've got the mammalian brain, which is also called um, the limbic system or the emotional brain, because this is where emotions happen, basically. It's the center of emotions. And the neocortex, that is the part that we as educators are interested in engaging mostly because it is in charge of learning. And that's where language acquisition occurs, for example. Um, that's why it's, it's really important to us as language teachers. And this is where uh, language is processed, of course. And this uh, is the reason why uh, learners who are under stress, they, they might find it difficult to process language as well. So one idea to better support uh, students is to use lots of visual aids and, and different um, techniques, multisensory uh, techniques to help them better understand language, right? We will uh, go deeper into this in some minutes. Right, and now we were going to move to Paris inverted pyramid. If you look at this inverted pyramid, you can see that we can actually draw a parallelism with the previous model. Yes, in the sense that the neocortex is in charge of the abstract uh, um, processing, let's say, then um, relate would be the emotions part and regulating, um, calming down and staying regulated with, uh, with the limbs, with the brain stem, sorry, or primitive brain. So let's start by uh, regulating. How can we help students to, to help uh, to stay regulated? One technique is breathe in and breathe out. Yeah, we're going to see grounding techniques here. And I would like you to do this with me. You can do it with your eyes open or with your eyes closed, you choose. So let's take at least three deep breaths. Hold it. Breathe out. All right. Again, breathe in. Breathe out. And then the last time. Breathe out. There we are. And my question is, if you did, did this with me, how are you feeling right now? Don't you feel a little bit, at least a little bit more relaxed? I'm sure the answer is yes. And that's, that has a scientific uh, explanation actually. And it's uh, because um, when we breathe in, we bring oxygen to the uh, prefrontal lobes. And that's why this is uh, very important to, to uh, bring oxygen to the brain that helps uh, the brain to, to calm down, right? And relax, it really does. And it's, it takes actually seconds. I mean, you can do it more times, of course, but it's a very effective. Um, technique and you can also do it at the beginning of the lesson, for example, to prepare students 
and with young learners you can use different games and poses and it helps in how to be all like mindfulness it can be like uh, the balloon techniques when uh, you can use different I mean analogies and of course you can also use music and all that the second is helping students distract themselves yeah what can we do to get students distracted so we can um, again train them with different grounding techniques for example getting them to look for a red object in the room or uh, actually um, get them to count how many pink objects they can see in the room for example when they they are acting out uh, aggressively for example or that's a way of putting their minds off a bit um, or if they are higher level students you can use different techniques another one is getting them to count backwards in nines for example so that we, that takes concentration and they will need to focus on something else and they will change the focus if something is worrying them and move everybody move there is uh, one session the decision by Fiona Damba let's dance and she focused on this I, I mean everybody should see this session it's amazing and also she expands on on these on the effects uh, of of moving on the brain and and that's a very very effective um I mean in, in different from different perspectives because when we move I mean uh, I mean several areas on the brain are activated so um that's why the brain uh is relaxed and it's also very effective for learning I always try to include some some clapping some um tapping on the on the table on the desk with my students um with, with drilling you can use it as well you can wrap some some structures some some grammar structures and that's, that's really effective learners have fun and that's also very very important um to to relax the brain right good now going on with Perry's pyramid um after the brain is relaxed and it's a calm we need to connect with students here is the emotional brain on stage and how we connect how can we connect with the students i mean um so after we uh, apply some grounding techniques it's time to uh, talk right and validate their feelings um what we can do is to use short sentences and tell them it's okay to feel this way it's okay to feel what you're feeling uh, in this way we are uh, validating what they feel we're relating and then connecting with students um, one way of connecting with them is telling them that we also have hard days tough days and it's really that we acknowledge and uh, I mean we acknowledge that this is hard there is a difficult situation that is challenging and that we happen uh, to to leave that too for example we can also say that um, we, we, we apply different techniques uh, to these. For example, you can say, okay, I know this is really, really challenging for you. I also feel this way. Um, when I feel like this, I uh, take deep breath and, uh, breaths and that helps me a lot. Or I go for a walk or I turn my camera off example so there are several uh, techniques you can share with your students in order to connect with them and then of course we need to uh, reflect help them reflect about the situation this is the uh, reasoning uh, section let's say and 
again, it's, it's very important that um, we validate their feelings, as we said in the previous stage, but now we need to reinforce the limits, right? We need to tell them that it's okay to feel that way, but it's not okay to behave inappropriately, okay? Um, and then we can, again, um, train them or, or offer different alternatives of what they can do when they feel this way, because probably um, they don't know what to do. But that's why they are reacting this way. I mean, uh, this is all subconscious. So they, they are, as we said before, students do not behave badly intentionally. Um, so that's why we need to train them to um, use different alternatives when they feel embarrassed, when they feel angry, when they feel in pain, for example. And now it's time for the most, uh, most juicy part of the session. So what are some classroom strategies we can apply? We have been discussing some already, but here are uh, a list. Um, you will see different uh, questions by different teachers. So this one is how can I handle a disruptive student? So I want you to help me. Uh, what advice would you give this teacher? How, how, how would you handle a disruptive student? What do you think? Mm -hmm. You can answer through a chat again. Remember that we said that um, behavior is communication, right? Okay, I, I'm watching the chat. Uh, I, I can tell you some answers. Do not take it personally and try to stay calm. Make that a student your personal assistant for the class. Uh, first ask what's the matter? <laughs> Do you remember we, you and I talked together about this? We talked about this, yeah. Yes. Uh, try to discover what's behind his or her story, maybe family matters. Mm -hmm. Great answers, people. I um, agree with almost all of them. Um, exactly, all valid answers. And yeah, getting them, um, one of them to, to be your helper is a, is a great idea, yeah? Um, to get them busy doing something productive, brilliant idea. Yes, thank you. And about asking them, what's the matter? Um, yeah, I understand, we, we want to know that, but um, do students have the answer to this question? Do they know what's the problem? Um, maybe not, right? And they, they will feel uh, worse. So let's be, be careful with this kind of questions, yeah? Uh, instead, we, we can ask uh, open-ended questions like, um, how are you feeling at the moment? We will go, I mean, there is one example later on, but yeah, brilliant. And yeah, uh, very, very good uh, point. The one of always trying to find out the reason behind it, why learners are uh, behaving that way. Um, students can d get disrupted for, for several reasons. I mean, the can be struggling with a task that is too difficult or too demanding for them, for example. And we can get, I mean, we can help them to get their the minds off a bit of the situation and distract with non-creative uh, tasks. Um, for example, I don't know, looking out the window or uh, tidying the desk for a minute simple tasks, you know, to, to help them relax for a bit. So they calm down. And then we can follow the stages we mentioned before, yes? Once they are calm, we can talk, we can 
um, validate their feelings and we can tell them that it's not okay. Yes. Second situation, second teacher. Sometimes my students try to annoy me or challenge me. Do you feel this way? And what do you think? How can we help this teacher? What advice would you give them? Okay, of course you, you can answer through the chat. Uh, I have seen also another another two answers before this, which says that also um, it, it's a, a good idea to talk uh, privately with the students. Perfect. Yes, exactly. Yeah, we have to be careful though with the young learners. Yes, for child protection reasons. But yeah, if um, yeah, we teenagers for I mean adults. Okay. Definitely. Yes. We, we have yeah. got some, some answers. Uh, be the Great. adult. Uh, let them try to challenge you and then challenge them back. Model appropriate behavior and dialogue. Um, also, we need to reflect afterwards what's going on and be open and honest with them. <laughs> and, and sometimes I feel like this, yes, a brief and count to 10. <laughs> Yes, I mean, yeah, we'll discuss about that later. We as teachers need to, need to regulate first. Totally, totally agree with that. Yeah, yeah, excellent answers, everybody. I, I do agree with all of them. As, as we mentioned before, and somebody said, uh, Tad, um, we shouldn't take this personally, right? Um, according to neuroscience research, um, the reason why people or students in this case behave badly is uh, maybe because they, they feel embarrassment or they feel, you know, they feel angry, anyway, anything. And they really don't know what to do. I mean, they learned this behavior in some other context and they are just um, behaving the same way in the classroom. That's why we shouldn't take it personally. And yeah, all valid answers. Um, and again, validate feelings and offer alternatives, like train them uh, to, to use different techniques instead of, you know, uh, trying to be in charge or anything of the sort, right? Um, but talking is the first step. Yeah. Third situation. Teacher three, how can we create a safe environment for learners who have experienced trauma? How can we do that? What do you think? Please leave your answers in the chat box. And Frank would be sharing. Great. Do we have some answers, Frank? Do you guys need uh, more thinking time? Well, we have got some answers over here, yes. Uh, be calm and respectful, be kind and gentle, a lot of affection and care and leave them be. Also good, good one for me. Okay. Yes, exactly. Modeling as the educator, as the um, um, model. Go on. Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, if you know the trauma, being careful with some topics uh, and kind of normalizing the situation, okay. we, should, we should take the conversation to the whole class and ask how could we create that environment and see if the child also says or agrees in something. I guess it's useful to know they have a trauma first, then find the best way to deal with that student. And safe environment, working in reduced groups. Interesting, uh, interesting. And I remember you, we have got uh, almost 15 minutes, well, 15 or 10 minutes 
almost. Okay, Rest. thanks. Thanks a lot. Brilliant, yes. Um, yes, for valid answers. But we as teachers can also, uh, from the teaching perspective, also create a safe environment for students, like establish, establish clear routines, so learners uh, know what to expect. So that will also uh, help them to feel less anxious in a way, especially if they have experienced trauma. And about instructions, keep instructions clear, use simple language, imperatives mainly, break down instructions into step because learners affected by trauma, I mean, often they get anxious very easily and forget what to do. So particularly if there is a complex se sequence of instructions. So that, that helps, I mean, everything helps. And so planning carefully and also introducing elements of surprise or elements of fun in the lesson that really it's spark learners curiosity. Yes, that's really important and, and it's effective for learners who have experienced trauma. I mean, for everybody. Michaela, uh, you can also mm -hmm. check the poll uh, in, in, in the poll result. Um, there are also some answers. Brilliant, yeah. Yeah, lovely. And yes, of course, as somebody mentioned before, um, be empathetic, that's key. Yeah, being caring. Mm -hmm. Here I'm opening the poll. Lovely. Being confident and letting them to express themselves. Yes. Listening to them. Very important. Yes. Really listening. Good. Try to avoid any topics that might make them feel uncomfortable. Create a respectful classroom environment. Yes. All these are key and also establish, establishing um, clear classroom rules, right? Um, so that it, everybody knows how to behave and what to expect so they won't get anxious and um, yeah, about any unexpected situations. Teacher four says, what should I do if a student acts out in aggression? What do, you th what do you think? What advices, again, would you give to this teacher? Mm -hmm. You can answer through the chat. I think I'm we mentioned this a lot during the session. What are the steps to follow in a way? Uh, I just can see an answer at this moment. It depends if they put themselves or others in harm's way. Mm -hmm. It is very difficult to learn with aggressive behavior, they do it again and again, a speaking group. Mm -hmm. Take them out of the, of the stressful situation, give them a space to cool down. Mm -hmm. Exactly. As you mentioned, Frank, in our rehearsal session, exactly, the first thing to do is to stop a learner who's acting out in aggression. Um, by no means uh, this student should be uh, go on acting like this, I mean. So we should stop them. And then the cycle we mentioned before, yeah? Um, first, calming them down, using a grounding technique. Or yeah, you mentioned separating them from the group, that can be an option. And then validating their feelings talking and the last stage we do once they are calm is to tell them okay this is not okay it's okay to feel this way but acting out aggression and behaving this way is, is not okay right um yeah it's very important to to set the limits yeah lovely now 
it's time for some do's and don'ts um, for the wrapping up part. So what do you think of the first one? Let students keep their hoodies on. Is that a do or a don't? What do you think? And always ask them what's wrong. Well, we discussed this before, but what do you think? I say talk to you, usually don't. <laughs> uh -huh, exactly, okay. It also don't. depends on the student, the group, and the reasons. Of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anything on the chat? Uh, don't, but personally, I don't find a very, thing, very serious thing. Don't, but as I said before, first ask students privately why. Great. Mm -hmm. Exactly. But now I tell you my. And Please yes, me. yes, M M Michelle Worgan here suggests the same you told. Perhaps we need to pick up our buttons. Yes. Exactly, exactly. I thought it was what I was about to say. Yes. And yeah, this can uh, apply for different situations, right? Like they um, listen to music in the classroom, I mean, with, with the uh, earphones, of course. Um, we should pick up battles, yes? I would say that's a do, keep, I mean, let their, them keep their hoodies on. As long as they uh, are not presenting a destructive behavior, as long as they uh, are participating, because they may feel um, embarrassed and that's a way of or hiding or that's the way or, or the mechanism uh, they learned um, to help them cope with this situation. So yeah, you can discuss this in private, as you said, and all that. But sometimes, um, yeah, we should pick up battles, definitely. And if it is on online lessons, online settings, you can even um, maybe introduce a game or a, I don't know, some uh, funny activity with this, like you can coordinate with him or with her privately and say, Okay, we'll set everybody to um, look at the screen for a minute, and then you um, take your hoodie off. So everybody will see that something's changed. Um, and then you, you, in a funny way, you ask them or you effectively had their hoodies off. And asking them what's wrong, as we said before, is, is not a good practice because maybe they don't have an answer to this question. And not having an answer and you asking them directly, that may be quite stressful for them and make matters worse. Yeah. Next one. Uh, the teacher should regulate first. Remember that regulating is to be calm. And the second, validating students' feelings by saying, Please calm down. What do you think about these ones? Are they do's? Are they don'ts? Mm -hmm. uh, first do, second don't, till the moment. <laughs> Everybody agrees. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant student. <laughs> um, yeah. Two minutes. Mm -hmm. Yes, perfect. We'll be traveling off. So, yes, exactly. Um, the teacher should regular first, right? If you need to breathe in and breathe out 10 times, go to 10, as, uh, as Frank said, go. But yeah, you need to regular first and you. Uh, you are the role model, so you need to calm down first. And yeah, um, telling students, please calm down, won't help really. So let's avoid that questions. We, we uh, mentioned before how to validate students' feelings, telling them it's okay to feel this way, for example, and similar um, 
expressions, yeah? So remember that students are not giving you a hard time. They are having a hard time. So that's why we need to help them in this situation to support them and don't take uh, bad behavior personally, as you said, uh, this is very important. And I would like you, uh, to, I would like to thank you, all of you for participating, for, for being there. And yeah, I'm really grateful to Frank, you as well. I don't know if we shall move to the Q and A, Q and A part, Frank. Okay, just let me check. Um, 